Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, hello. My name is Wilf, Wilf Mertens. I'm a storyteller. And I'm here to tell you a story. The story I'm here to tell you is very relevant to what you're watching this evening. The story of Ronaldo as sung by our wonderful performers and played. But if you are following along with the Italian, then, and you're a bit mixed up about where we are in the plot, I'm only going to confuse things further. Because the story I'm going to tell you is not exactly the story that you're watching tonight. I dived back in at Nico's suggestion to the source material. They are two epic poems written in medieval times, Orlando Imorato and Orlando Furioso. And they are not only the source material for this opera, at least one of the source materials, but also for many other operas and much other storytelling of all kinds. So I'm going to give you something very valuable, even if it will only confuse matters further if you're looking at the mess of war and love upon the stage. So without further ado, condensed into hopefully under 10 minutes, you have two epic poems, Orlando Imorato and Orlando Furioso. A long, long time ago, during the reign of Charlemagne, a princess from India came to the court. Her name was Angelica. That's right, her name was Angelica. And she was very beautiful, which meant all the knights, of course, being good sports, fell head over heels in love with her. And Angelica, as you will find out in the course of this story, absolutely loves pitting people against each other to fight for her. And so she suggested uh, a wonderful thing, that only the one who could best her brother, Argalio, who was a fearsome knight, in knightly competitions, jousts and so on and so forth, could have her hand in marriage. And all the knights thought this was very fun. And the top knights, the two top knights of Charlemagne's court, are Orlando and Ronaldo. And they can't wait for their turn because they're both already very in love with this princess from India named Angelica. But the problem is they don't get their turn because there's this knight called Ferrau. And Ferrau is a very feral fellow, this Ferrau, and he fights unfair. And during the battle with Argalio, he pulls a knife and he stabs him in the heart. And that way he wins the competition. Not in a very sporting manner, but he does win the competition. But Angelica doesn't like the look of him, and so she flees. And Ferrau, of course, like a dog after the quarry, gives chase. But unluckily for him and luckily for Angelica, he's not very good at chasing, and so he loses track of her. Ronaldo and Orlando sense that they could be the heroes to save the day and maybe win a princess's heart in the process, and they've given chase too, and they're better at chasing, and they catch up with Angelica in a clearing in a forest. Now, Ronaldo and Angelica are both thirsty. Orlando's not, not sure why. And they drink from a fountain that happens to be in this clearing. What they don't know is this fountain is enchanted. And it has the quality that if you drink from it, you will fall in love with the first person that you see. So Angelica, sipping from this fountain, gazes upon Ronaldo and boom, falls in love. But this fountain, it also has the quality that if you're already in love, you will fall out of love. And so when Ronaldo does the same, he looks at Angelica and he's like, eh. <laughs> And Angelica's... Oh, please, come, come back to my castle, come back to my castle. They're already halfway to India by now. Come back to my castle and I'll, I'll host you and we'll have, a, we'll, have a, we'll have a party and a soiree and we'll stay up late and we'll tell each other our life stories. And the whole way back to her castle, she's wooing him and she's getting a bit pleady. She's making herself all kinds of available. None of it's working. And Orlando, who's still in love with Angelica, he's thinking to himself, my cousin's not interested, they're cousins by the way, my cousin's not interested, and so, uh, you know, I'll just be there, and, and when she finally gets over him, I'll be there, and she'll realise that I was there all along, Her, you know, she thought maybe we were just friends, but we we're more than friends, I'll be the sympathetic, people always think this will work, it won't work, it won't work being the sympathetic friend, Orlando, but he thinks it'll work, and so he's there being the sympathetic friend. Now, meanwhile, back in France, things are going badly for Charlemagne because there's an evil king, as there often is, and he's invading France. And it's all Agramante can do to, 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 to keep him back, this King Agramante. And where are my two top knights? No one knows where they are. They're over in India, locked in an awkward love triangle. <laughs> they get to the castle, Angelica, she's a pretty sensible princess as they go, 
She gives up on trying to woo Ronaldo because it's not working. So she gets her court wizard to lock him on an island and do magic on him and try and make, her fall in, might make him fall in love with her that way. It doesn't work. And after a long episode, which I don't have time to recount to you now, he escapes from the island and tries to make his way back to France. Angelica finds out he's escaped and she chases him. And Orlando, being the helpful friend, chases her, chasing him. And they meet each other back in the clearing with the enchanted fountain. And once again, Ronaldo and Angelica are thirsty, and Orlando's not, not sure why. Maybe he brought a flask. Very important to the story that he doesn't drink. The other two do, and of course what happens? Ronaldo falls back in love with Angelica, and Angelica is like, uh, do you know what, let's leave it. <laughs> And she wants to go back to France, and she's halfway there already, and go and collect the remains of her brother. But Ronaldo is like, but I love you, come on, just a mo let's, we can be happy together, we can live in India or in France, whatever, we could travel between the two, we could have such a good life together. But Orlando, he steps in front of his cousin, he says, what are you doing? You're messing the princess around, you love her, you don't love her, you love her, just make, I mean, just, just get out of the way, don't you know? She needs someone constant. It's me she needs. I'm the one who's been like a pillar through this whole thing. Ronaldo says, how dare you? You know I love her. This is, we've got a thing going on. Just stay out of it. And Orlando is like, no way. And the swords are drawn and they're fighting with one another. And Angelica is loving it and leaning against a tree and watching this fight over her take place. And it goes on, it goes on. The swords clash and the buckles are swashed. It goes on so long that uh, King... Charlemagne has time to find out that his two top knights are fighting and so he comes by to try and collect them and help with the old war and uh, save uh, France from certain defeat and he sees what's going on and he whispers being a very uh, wise king in Angelica's ear and Angelica she smiles and she goes over and she says boys 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 instead of fighting each other to prove how much you love me I tell you what why don't you go and help your king because he's got a spot of bother and take on Agramante, and the one who shows the most valor in combat, they will be the one who can have my hand in marriage. And so it is that Orlando and Ronaldo think this is a jolly good idea, and they mount their steeds, and they gallop off with Charlemagne to go and save France. Meanwhile, Angelica, she pops off to a castle nearby, Duke Namos is the Duke's name, and is hosted there, uh, much to her liking. Paris is saved with uh, Ronaldo and Orlando's help, but the problem is, is the retreating forces of Agramante, as they retreat to regroup, they besiege the castle of Duke Namos. And despite the fact that Angelica drops lots of hints about how the Duke might prove himself and go out and meet the enemy, the Duke finds he has some business under the bed, and so Angelica is left to escape on her own and get out. I told you she was good at running away, and she escapes away from the uh, uh, troops of Agramante and into the woods. And there's a little bit where Pharaoh chases her again. You remember Pharaoh, he's the actual one who actually won her hand. Uh, but again, she's very good at escaping, which is useful because she's constantly getting engaged to people she doesn't want to marry. And she escapes him, and she runs into one of King Agramante's infantrymen, an infantryman from King Agramante's army, and his name is Maduro. And now, he's dying. He's been wounded, and he's lying there dying in the forest. And she runs across him. She feels sorry for him and she takes care of him and she nurses him back to health in a, shepherd, in a shepherd's hut. Now, it won't surprise you to know that if you are an infantryman in the army of a bad king fighting a war that means nothing to you and you lie dying in a forest and then a princess from India who's very beautiful comes and re but who inexplicably has the name of an American six-year-old born in 1990 comes and rescues you you fall in love with her. That, to me, makes perfect sense. The logic is just, of course, he's going to fall in love with her. The more surprising thing is that she falls in love with him. She falls in love with this infantryman from Agramante's army. And also, there happens to be a shepherdess who's sort of hanging out in the hut at that time. And she also falls in love with Medoro. So we've got another love triangle. So Medoro says, why don't you fight over me? He doesn't say that, he doesn't say that. That's, it's Angelica who says that sort of stuff. He loves Angelica, and so the two of them, they just go off back to India and live happily ever after. An option that's not available to the rest of the characters in our story. The shepherdess, her heart is broken, and the boys in France, they're, they're, they're struggling to, to defend the place, and King Agramante is regrouping his army on the island of Lampedusa in Italy, and 
He's going to attack, and, and, and Ronaldo and Orlando have heard about this uh, Angelica. She's, you know, she's in love with someone else. Ronaldo takes it kind of okay, actually. He's like, well, it was all an adventure. I'm a knight after all. But Orlando is always the sympathetic friend you've got to watch. When they snap, they really snap. And he goes absolutely, well, for lack of a better word, furioso. And he's trashing <laughs> Europe trashing the place, which is what they, knights sometimes do this, and that's why you've got to send them on cru crusades to make sure the trouble they cause is, is far away. But it's too late for a crusade now. He's absolutely trashing the place, and that's, of course, playing into King Agramante's hands. And everyone's trying to calm him down, but no one can. Enter the story's one and only Englishman, Astolfo. And Astolfo, he's calm, collected, suave, reasoned. He's got some Astolfo fans in the house. That's good to hear. Uh, and uh, Astolfo, he hears what the problem is, and he says, I, I can fix this. And so he jumps on his hippogriff, and he flies off to Ethiopia. And he tells the Ethiopians about the problem, and they stroke their beards, and they say, okay, he's lost his wits. All lost things end up on the moon. Now, Astolfo, you'll be well aware that we Ethiopians have a whole load of Old Testament loot. And so you can borrow Elijah's golden flying chariot, fly up to the moon, and collect your friend's lost wits. And while he's en route, I'm just going to quickly fill you in on an important side plot, which is <laughs> that of Bradamante, another cousin of Orlando and Ronaldo. She is a knight too, and she's fallen in love with one of the knights of Agramante's army, and that's obviously the star-crossed lovers. Everything's set against them apart from true love. And like a lot of true loves, he ends up getting himself locked in a tower of an evil, evil sorcerer. And um, he doesn't have anything useful like long hair or whatever, so it's up to Bradamante to come and rescue him, which she does do. It takes a long time, but eventually she gets him back to France where he kneels before Charlemagne and swears his allegiance and changes sides. And she's feeling really happy with things, and she says to her cousin Ronaldo, right, come on, let's go and buckle those swashes and, and, and sort out this enemy and save the day. I've got this sexy new knight, and it's all going to be good. And he says, no, it's not, because Orlando's going crazy, and we've got a lot on our hands and uh, no one can calm him down. But Astolfo has been nosing around on the moon like he's in an old antique shop, and he's found Orlando's wits. And he flies back down to the chariot, gives it back to the Ethiopians, it's still there today, rides back to France, and he gets the wits, and Bradamante on one side, Ronaldo on the other, they pin Orlando down, and they tip the wits back down his gullet. Ooh! You know, we valorize madness in our society. We valorize madness. Madness and genius, they go together. But wits, they have a real bite to them. And Orlando, he sees sense. He's sane again. And of course, he's no longer in love. Because what is love but a form of madness? He's sane again, and he goes with his comrades to the island of Lampedusa, and they take on the forces of King Agramante. There's an epic battle. They splurge the rest of their special effects budget, and they save the day. And having defeated Agramante and restored Charlemagne to peaceful France, I'm very pleased to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that they all live happily ever after. <laughs> Thank you.